Next from Chicago, we go one-on-one -on -one with former DuPage County Chairman Bob Schillerstrom. As one who ran the second largest county in Illinois, Mr. Schillerstrom offers his thoughts on how government can be better managed to offer services without busting the budget. This runs about 25 minutes. Bob Schillerstrom, thanks for joining us again on the Illinois Channel. Terry, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, last time we talked to you, I think you were running for governor at that time. You were the head of DuPage County, and uh, why don't we update everyone as far as what are you doing these days? Well, much has changed since then. I'm uh, practicing law full-time. I'm uh, with the law firm of Ice Miller. We have offices uh, in the suburbs, in Lyle. That's where my primary office is. And then we have offices in Chicago, and I spend a fair amount of time in uh, Chicago. So I'm practicing law full-time. When you work here in the legal aspect, what, what area of law are you focusing on? I, I deal with government. So in other words, if somebody has an issue with government, whether it be a zoning issue or uh, how, how you get something done with government, uh, that's pretty much what I do. I do some tax work. Uh, but generally, uh, after spending many years uh, with government, now I'm trying to help clients uh, navigate some of, the, uh, uh, some of the little idiosyncrasies of government to get things done. And, you know, obviously that's something, you having run DuPage County, you know the inner workings of government, you know the mindset within government. Um, and it's something I think one of the reasons primarily why we wanted to sit and talk with you. Being out of office now, I think you're a little maybe freer to speak than when you have the responsibilities of being an office holder. When we, when we look at so many things uh, in the state economy today, and let's talk about jobs. You know, Governor Quinn often says his mantra is jobs, jobs, jobs. What we often hear from people in business is the frustration they have in dealing with government, getting permits on a timely basis, a variety of things, the red tape that's often involved. From your perspective, having both run a government and now helping people kind of uh, go through those areas that can be problematic, uh, what would you say, about, what, what is the proper role of government and what, if anything, can be done so that here in Illinois we can have government be more responsive to the needs of business to help the uh, Illinois economy get going again. Well, I agree, number one, that probably the most important issue we have facing us right now is jobs. People don't have the luxury of becoming involved in other issues if they don't have a job. And it does appear that the economy is coming back. But one of the things I always felt that was very important at DuPage County was that as a government, as government leaders, as elected officials, it was our job to create an environment where business wanted to locate so that there would be jobs there for our constituents. And if, there were, if people were working, obviously they were then paying taxes and they were spending money and it made our economy work. And one of the problems I think we have in Illinois right now is that I'm not sure the state government gets that. And Illinois is not a terribly hospitable place for business and because of that, we don't have as many jobs as we need. And I think that's one of the things that the state has to get back to is finding a way to create an environment where businesses want to locate and create jobs here so that we can put the people of Illinois back to work. What kind of things when you talk with your clients and you have to unsnarl some of the things that are holding them back, <clears throat> what are their frustrations with government? Well, first frustration I think you hear a lot is the cost of doing business in this state. If you're a business and you're looking to relocate somewhere and you look at Illinois and you look at the the massive increases that they've just had in the business taxes and then you look at the personal income tax going on going up uh, two points that's a strike against the state of Illinois right off the bat I hear oftentimes why would any business want to come to Illinois and there are a lot of reasons why businesses have historically come to Illinois we have a great location in the country. We're a transportation center. We've got some of the best farmland in the world. There are many, many pluses to, to being in Illinois. But unfortunately, people who are looking to locate here and who are looking to create jobs, they don't often get to the pluses because they look at the cost of doing business here. And Illinois is just not a very business-friendly state. I think we need to change that around. Now, one of the things, again, you ran DuPage County, we have the state government, we have county government, we have municipal government, is, is one of the frustrations, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, I don't know, 
is it problematic dealing with the different levels of government that business find, or, or are there other areas that are more uh, cause for concern? That's one of the issues. I mean, Illinois has more government than any state in the union, maybe by a factor of two. And it's confusing to businesses. They come in and they have to deal with one entity of government, and maybe they never saw an entity of government like that in another state. So it is a little bit confusing. And then on top of that, they may have to deal with multiple layers of government. It's not government is not user friendly in the in the state of Illinois. One because there's so much of it, and as a general rule, I think certainly on the state level, when a business comes here. I don't think they're viewed as somebody who's looking to invest in this state. That's one of the things we always tried to do in DuPage County. If somebody came in and they filed a zoning petition or they wanted to subdivide some property or they wanted to come here, we looked at them as somebody who wanted to invest in our county and we tried to be responsive to them and we tried to help them. We made them follow the rules and regulations, but time is money and sometimes government moves so slowly and they forget that. And I think the state would be much better served if they tried to look at economic development from the point of view of the, of the individual or the business that's coming in here and wanting to invest in our state. You know, one of the, I, I think management of government is kind of an undercovered issue. Um, I hear increasingly myself, when I have conversations with people about the frustration, uh, primarily with the state, of not being able to get things done. And the irony is, on one hand, we want to have government cost down, we might say bloated bureaucracies, but I, I hear at the state level, uh, for whatever reason, often there's one or two people in a department who are responsible for some something, and so it takes businesses months sometimes to get their paperwork freed up, uh, and from the people working for the state, they would say, we're overburdened. We don't have enough help. We've had any number of people leave government with all these uh, early retirements over the years. And so now two or three people are doing sometimes the work that used to be done by 15 or 20 people. You were a, a manager again, a managed government at DuPage County. How do you find that proper balance? And, and government is not exactly like a business. So how do, you, how do you manage government? How do you know if your bureaucracy is meeting the needs? And uh, let, let's just talk about that. Bring us inside your lessons learned from having run one of the largest governments in the state of Illinois. One of the things that we did on a regular basis was we always looked for places where we could be more efficient, where we could cut out duplicity uh, or just cut out things that weren't really needed. But, you know, we used to say on a regular basis, you know, you can't cut muscle because if you do, then your government doesn't function well. And the art of running a government and perhaps running anything is to cut the things that you really don't need, that maybe that they're there just because they've been there for a long time, that perhaps you could do better with technology uh, or, or with different people. And that's why I think, one, you got to put a lot of time into it. You have to have a good team around you. And then you have to be willing to make some tough decisions. I, one of the things I sometimes think that we see in state government is nobody wants to make the tough decisions. Maybe it would be best for the citizens if we eliminated the department and put a few more people in an area where they do economic development that may create some political issues. And I, th I think we need some leadership in Illinois who's not afraid to make some long range, tough decisions, maybe to irritate some folks and to say no to some people. That's not an easy thing to do when you're in government and when you have to run for election in two years or four years. And I think that's part of our problem. The state is sort of run on a two year cycle. The elected officials oftentimes think, well, what do I have to do now to get myself reelected in two years? Whereas what they should be doing is saying, well, what do we have to do now to make sure that the state runs well in five years or in 10 years? And I always felt that if you were doing your job as the chief executive officer of whether it's the county or the state or uh, a municipality, you're going to irritate some people because the world is changing quickly 
And as a leader, you have to make changes too. And we know that generally institutions and people, they don't like change. So I, I, I think we have to have some people who are willing to do things differently in the state of Illinois, to say no to some of the vested interests, and to not be afraid to do things uh, uh, differently and to you know, reallocate some resources. When you were running uh, DuPage County, you obviously went after businesses. You uh, drew them in. You even lowered taxes as you were running the government. Uh, what, did, what, what did you find that was successful in bringing businesses to DuPage County and to the extent that does that hold any lessons for the state of Illinois as far as bringing business? I think it does hold lessons. I mean, I think there's a couple of things that you, that you have to do. Uh, businesses are not going to want to go to a place where the government is run irresponsibly. So I think you have to set a good example by running your government in a responsible fashion. We tried, and I think we were successful, at providing good services, and then we always look for ways to try and bring the cost of government down. We were very successful doing that. We were a business center. We brought a lot of businesses in here, and we lowered property taxes 9 out of 12 years. But we did make some people mad by changing things. And I, I think the, th the same thing holds true for the state. One, you have to go out and you have to actively seek business. You have to talk to them. You have to, t you have to sell them on your state, uh, or sell them on your county. And in a lot of ways, I, I sort of viewed myself uh, when I was running DuPage County as the chief salesman for the county. And I was always willing to you know, talk to our existing businesses to try and learn from them we created an entity called Choose DuPage where business and government could talk so we could find out what we, we as government could be doing better to, to, serve, uh, to serve businesses and it's been a very successful model. Uh, I also think, as I said... Can, can I, I was going to say, because it occurred to me, I was going to ask you that. When you got a business in, did you only hear the negative things or did you have a dialogue with them? so that you had ongoing communication as far as what was working, what did they like, and what didn't they like. It sounded like you did have that dialogue. We did have that dialogue, and we also tried to have business talk to business. Uh, we, we'd go out and we'd take a few of our existing businesses to explain uh, what was good about DuPage County, and we also tried to talk to those businesses about what we could do better. And they may say, well, you've got to invest in the infrastructure, you've got to keep the costs down, uh, we, we went in on a number of times and uh, tried to improve uh, particular roads and areas because, uh, you know, there was too much traffic to get in and out of buildings. So we listened to what they said. We tried to be responsive, and it, it worked very well. It's like a lot of things. It's amazing what can happen when you communicate and you, and you just talk to people and talk to, talk to businesses. And... As I said before, I think the other thing you have to do is you have to just kind of create uh, a business environment where businesses want to be. You try and keep the cost of government down. You try and provide good transportation for them, uh, good infrastructure in general. And we, we really focused on that. And I think that's one of the things that Illinois needs to do better. They need to really focus on creating that, that environment because I think all too often recently uh, business has sort of been viewed negatively in the state of Illinois and because of that we're losing them uh, we sort of deal with them on a piecemeal basis which is no way to deal with anything you need to have rules and have them apply to everybody and I, I think Illinois just has to recommit to being a business friendly place and really working at it and saying we want business to come here and create jobs uh, Caterpillar kind of famously after the last tax increase uh, raised some awareness of their disconcerns and saying, you know, maybe we would uh, perhaps look to move out of the state. They, they didn't. Governor Quinn met with uh, the CEO of Caterpillar. But by the same token, I think when they were building new plants, they built them in other states. Um, and it, it occurred to me I didn't remember Caterpillar, and I don't mean to pick on them, but just it was kind of a famous example. Uh, I don't remember them saying anything before the tax increase. So the question is, to what extent does business, the business community, have a responsibility to be 
I would say, more engaged in the public policy arena so that they're having their voice heard not after the fact and saying, you guys screwed up when you did this, but to say, you know, here's what we need, here's what we hope you don't do, so that uh, whatever level of government, and let's say the state of Illinois, uh, will at least know before they pass something, already know what the business community's uh, feeling on that topic would be. That responsibility goes both ways. I, I think that it is incumbent upon our elected officials to talk to business and say, we're thinking about doing this, or if we did this, or what do we need to do to create that business environment for you? And I also think that business needs to talk to their elected officials and say, you guys aren't doing the job, or we need you to do this, or if you pass that law, you're going to you know, drive us or drive other businesses out of the, uh, out of the state. I, I think it's a perfect example of uh, business has to stand up and be heard, and the government officials have to listen and then act upon that if it, if it makes sense to create a business environment to keep businesses and to keep jobs here. When you, uh, you had to deal, some I would think, with pensions at the county level. When you look at the problems that the state is having with its pension costs, what do you make of that? Well, the first thing is we have uh, the Illinois Municipal Retirement Fund is the pension system that serves county employees. It is probably one of the best funded uh, pension systems in the, well, certainly in the state and maybe beyond the state. But we, we made our payments every single year. I think a pension system can work. But I'll tell you one thing, it can't work if the government doesn't make their payments. And that's the problem we've had in Illinois, is the state of Illinois, for whatever political reason, uh, probably for some short-term budgetary reason, has failed to make the payments that they promised people that they would make. And that's why we're in the situation that we're in. They just put it off, put it off, put it off, and refuse to deal with it amazingly irresponsible from a budgetary point of view and amazingly irresponsible to the people of this state. Now we're in a crisis and it is a crisis that has to be addressed because I come back to creating a business environment. Essentially the state of Illinois is functionally bankrupt. What business is going to want to come here and locate if the government is so irresponsible that they regularly spend more than they bring in and there's always that fear of raising taxes or passing punitive, uh, punitive laws uh, that will negatively impact uh, business. We have the rating agencies telling us on a regular basis that they're going to downgrade us. I think the three rating agencies have downgraded Illinois 13 times. Uh, if that's not a message that we're doing something wrong, I don't know what is. So the state must address the pension issue. It's a very, very difficult issue. But the one thing I think that they have to do is they have to take the Constitution into consideration. The Constitution says that you can't impair a pension. And to just pass something for political reasons and to say, oh, we cross that off the list, and then know that the courts are going to strike it down would be even more irresponsible than the state has been in the past. So I think they have to do something responsibly and they haven't been good at doing that. But we're going to have a hard time addressing our budgetary issues. We're going to have a hard time creating that business environment I talk, I talk about until we address pensions. And uh, they can't put it off any longer. We, we can't afford to be uh, downgraded a few more times. Uh, our, we'll, we'll be issuing junk bonds. And, uh, and then the people of the state will be just paying more and more. So. Uh, the one thing that I think that the state has to do, and they has, have to do it right away, is address the pension issue and address it in a, uh, a responsible, constitutionally acceptable way. Have you right looked away. at uh, Senator Cullerton? The uh, Senate president has suggested uh, kind of a trade-off that will keep paying your health care benefits if you, uh, state employee, agree to take a uh, lower pension payment, and therefore it is not necessarily a diminishment. I think uh, his rationale is if it is uh, negotiated. Uh, what do you think of that particular approach, or is there any other approach? That I, you I, I think that the approach that he is taking, which takes 
the constitutional responsibilities into consideration is the correct approach to take. Uh, I haven't looked at all of the intricacies of his bill, but I do think that any conversation that takes place about pensions, you have to talk about the pe you have to talk about the Constitution. Otherwise, like Med Mal, you have something passed and then it's thrown out. Exactly. And what good is that? Then we just lose two years. And uh, so I, I would just encourage the state legislature and the governor to to really pass something that is going to pass uh, uh, judicial review and constitutional muster. And the one, the, the one person that's really having that conversation uh, that I'm aware of is Senator Cullerton at this time. Now, whether or not his bill is, is the one that's going to pass that constitutional muster and, and uh, bring the savings that we need, uh, I'm unsure of that. But uh, certainly, uh, he's taking the right things into consideration. Uh, we only have about a minute left, so let me just ask you to put on your political hat for a minute. Uh, we talk about Illinois being a very blue state. That wasn't always the case. Uh, what do you think the Republicans in Illinois need to do to kind of get back into uh, being more in control of the government? I think the Republicans, and to some degree like the Democrats, need to focus on our financial issues. Uh, as I said earlier, I don't think that we have the luxury in Illinois of dealing with issues that don't address our financial crisis. We are in a crisis and we need to all come together and figure out how to solve that crisis. We have to put a wedge issue or divisive issues behind us and figure out how we're going to solve the pension problem, how we're going to pay our bills, how we're going to balance our budget and how we're going to bring jobs back to the state of Illinois. If the Republicans can focus on that, I believe that more of them will get elected. If they don't, I think that the people of Illinois understand that we are in a financial crisis, and I don't think they're going to vote for Republicans or Democrats that aren't going to, aren't going to have a plan to step forward and solve that problem. Right, well, Bob Shorestone, uh, we appreciate you taking the time to share your thoughts with us. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate it. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation form to provide gavel to gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois.